The work we will be looking at today is called The Liberation of Andromeda by the Renaissance artist Piero de Cosimo. Also called Perseus Freeing Andromeda, this work depicts a famous passage from Ovid's Metamorphoses. To quickly summarize the story, Perseus, a demigod whose father is Zeus, is returning home from slaying the Gorgon Mendusa. He flies home using shoes from the god Hermes and happens to see Andromeda tied to a rock below. She is there because her father insulted Poseidon, god of the sea, by saying that she was more beautiful than the sea nymphs, Poseidon's daughters. She is now to be sacrificed to a terrible sea monster, but Perseus comes down and slays the monster in order to save her. As a reward, Andromeda's father gives Perseus her hand in marriage. The painting's design was attributed inaccurately to Leonardo da Vinci for several centuries, with Piero only listed as executing the work. It was not until 1825 that documents surfaced that attributed the work to Piero alone. The painting relays the story through the use of discontinuous narration. That is where all of the different and varied components of the story are included within one image, even though they do not all happen at the same time. The narrative functions by having the viewer look at the work in a circular pattern, starting in the top right with the image of flying Perseus. It is important to note that Piero follows Ovid's story very closely in this panel. The image of flying Perseus represents him flying over Ethiopia, where he gains sight of the imprisoned Andromeda. Upon seeing the princess, he decides to confront the monster which he is then shown attacking. Just beyond Perseus fighting the monster, it is easy to pick out Andromeda tied to the wall and her grief-stricken friends and family in the bottom left corner. Notice how this entire side of the image seems to lean away from the monster in unison. Even the trees in the landscape mimic the terrified posture of Andromeda and her family. Now they all create an implied line that sends the viewer moving around the bottom of the image to reach the celebration scene. Here, Perseus and Andromeda rejoice with the same friends and family who were horrified on the other side of the work. Take a look at the completely changed posture of the figures. Now everyone lifts up their hands in celebration, and they create another implied line that leads to the final segment of the story. Right above the celebration is a very small, almost microscopic scene, where Perseus offers three sacrifices in accordance with what is told by Ovid. Not only does Piero follow the story by adding the three sacrifices, but he takes the time to create the exact right animals for each of the three gods. This is one of the perfect examples of how Piero chooses to follow Ovid's narrative down to the smallest and most inconsequential seeming detail. That completes the visual narrative that is being told in the work, which an educated Renaissance viewer would have been able to put together. Now, this painting was most likely made for Filippo Strozzi the Younger, sometime between 1510 and 1513. The work was created as a private panel and probably meant for the decoration of a bedchamber. There is even an idea proposed by some historians that it was meant to hang on a special throne bench that was given to Filippo by the Medici, a powerful and wealthy Florentine banking family, when he married into that family. The idea, though, has little support. The Strozzi themselves were an influential Florentine family who were often either at odds with or allied with the Medici depending on the time and the situation. When Piero was creating this work, it appears that the Strozzi were allied with the Medici due to visual elements that reference the family. Some art historians argue that the work includes portraits of the Medici family. For example, Perseus is said to be Lorenzo di Piero de' Medici, the son of Lorenzo the Magnificent, and this idea is furthered because Perseus is dressed like the Duke of Urbino, a title Lorenzo held. The theory of family portraits is fairly well accepted, but some art historians argue for other, less plausible ideas. By far the most popular of these ideas is that the stump and the new growth in the center of the work have some kind of political meaning. It is reported to represent either the rebirth of the Medici specifically, or the rebirth of Florence and the Strozzi family because of the return of the Medici. At the time of Piero's work, the Medici had returned to power in Florence after having been in exile for almost 20 years. Both of these theories, though, have serious flaws.
The first problem is the general idea of a private work that would never be seen by the public carrying some kind of covert political message. This is something that generally does not happen during this period in other paintings. Even more so, works of classical mythology were likewise rarely used to communicate political ideas. The next issue is that the stump with the growth on the side is found in a number of Piero's other works, and those have no connection whatsoever to the Medici. The final issue is the superior and likely more accurate theory that explains the placement and appearance of the stump. It fits better as a symbol for Andromeda, who on the left side of the work, where the stump appears dead, fears that she soon will also be dead. But on the right side of the work, where the stump appears to produce new growth, she is celebrating her new life after her rescue by Perseus. This last theory provides a much more plausible explanation for the stump in contrast to the more far-fetched connection made to the Medici. That about wraps things up for today. As you can see, it is clear that there is a lot going on throughout the work. Movement is happening everywhere in the image, but even with the numerous action sequences and the different narrative elements, Piero manages to pull it all together into a seamless whole that is very appealing to look upon. One of his last works, and considered to be his greatest, this detailed-filled panel imparts a powerful story. What exactly is meant by much of the work will never be known, but the joy in viewing a work by Piero di Cosimo is in the fact that much of it is enigmatic and defies easy explanation. This painting is an unsolvable puzzle that allows the viewer to make his or her own interpretation of the meaning.